episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. Noriaki, Kakuen, and his stand Hierophant Green have their final battle with Dio and Zawarudo! This week's episode was definitely one of my favorites of the entire series. The battle with Dio is by far the most intense battle we've seen from the show. It's the largest. They're fighting in this massive Egyptian city, and they're using abilities that we've never even seen before, and that's what makes this episode so surprising. I especially love the fact that both Kakyoin and Joseph Joestar are using their stands just like Spider-Man. They're actually like using the tendrils and tentacles that they use from their stands to swing around the city, and they're all bright and colorful and go great against the darkness of the city. It's just a very nice nice eye-catching battle scene. But the big reason to check out this week's episode is to get to see Kakyoin's final battle against Dio. Now, after watching the preview from last week's episode, I sort of predicted that he was probably going to be killed, and that is the case in this week's episode. But Kakyoin goes out like a boss. He figures out the true powers behind the world, and he's able to pass that knowledge on to Joseph, who then passes it on to Jotaro. But before we get all to that, we have a lot of action. So Kakyoin's really great in this episode because, like I said, we see a number of abilities we haven't seen before. He's using this barrier technique where whenever Dio actually touches Hierophant Green, all of these Hierophant tentacles will just appear all around him in this 20 meter radius, and whenever he tries to attack, he's going to be attacked by the Emerald Splash from multiple directions. There's even a scene where Dio ends up taking a shot to the shoulder, but that doesn't even bother him whatsoever because out of nowhere, this one scene where he's about to finally be barraged by a number of attacks, suddenly he uses the power of the world and Kakyoin just gets sent flying across the city and slamming right into this water tower and he has this massive hole in his stomach, he's bleeding out and basically he's dying right here. This scene is really depressing and it's sort of, you know, you can see it coming and a lot of that has to do with the fact because you had those flashbacks at the beginning of the episode where you get to learn that when uh, Noriaki Kakyoin was a young kid, he didn't really have any friends. He really couldn't understand anyone and that's because he had these weird stand powers and he didn't really have like a true understanding or friendship or camaraderie until he met Jotaro in his group and this again just makes you care about the character a little bit more as he's getting ready to meet his demise and he's trying to figure out why he lost how his powers worked and that's when he finally realizes that the world has the ability to stop time it's official in this week's episode and as I mentioned in my previous reviews it's near identical to what Goldo does from Dragon Ball Z the member of the Ginyu Force except that Dio doesn't have to hold his breath he literally just just activates the world and when everything is close to him it all freezes and what he does during this time is he freezes he walks around the Hierophant Green slowly walks up to Kakyoin actually manages to uh, berate him as he can't even hear him just demonstrating again why Dio is just such an underhanded villain and then he punches right through his body and sends him flying and has him killed as Kakyoin is about to die with his last breath he decides he's going to try and tell Joseph what's going to happen and this scene is so depressing and it really made me misty eyed I'm not gonna lie, especially the scene where he decides to destroy the clock, because he has no power to do anything. He summons Hierophant Green and just immediately disappears as he's using the attack. It's a really well done death scene, and the clock gets destroyed, and this is basically Joseph Josar's clue as to how his powers work. The clock has stopped. Time has stopped. Joseph unfortunately sort of learns this at the last second as he runs into his grandson Jotaro, and this leads to quite possibly the best scene of the entire episode, which is the big buildup to Jotaro and Dio's battle, but I love how when Dio stops time, all of these people around him are just hanging out at night, and as he's walking past, everything's frozen. There's this one scared cat that's in the air, and Dio just swats it with his hand, and it just explodes in this like big bloody mass. The head ends up in the hands of this one other person. He takes a fork and ends up sticking it through a woman's face. You can see these guys are actually drinking from their glasses. There are parts of this dead cat inside of it. Dio took the time to make sure these people were going to be completely freaked out by these events, and he didn't even need to do it. He is a disgustingly awesome villain. And then what comes is quite possibly the most shocking scene of the episode, and that is when Joseph Joestar is supposedly killed. There's a scene where Dio uses the world and he doesn't want to touch him because he's actually using his hermit purple and wrapping it up with Haman, the anti-vampire powers, and he takes this knife out of his pocket, throws it right at him, and it stops right before he hits his neck. And then he deactivates the world, ends up hitting Joseph Joestar, and that's it. He just falls on the ground, starts coughing up blood, spitting it out, and we don't know if he's dead or not, but I'm pretty sure he's not dead. And the only reason I say that is because every single time they defeat a stand user or one of the main characters is killed, they let you know. They give you a little title card letting you know that the character is dead. Joseph 
is going to live, my friends. He might not battle anymore, but he's going to be just fine. And then we have Jotaro. Oh my god, I didn't even know we were going to get any action between these two characters. The minute Jot uh, Jotaro started walking up to him, I thought they were just going to do to be continued. No, we get right into the freaking battle. And this scene is so awesome because who else just walks up to Dio? Nobody, except for Jotaro. When he sees his grandfather attacked, he slowly walks up to him like a freaking serial killer, and they begin fighting, bringing out their stands, fighting each other. Mura, mura, mura! Ora, 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 ora! It is freaking awesome, and I cannot wait to see the conclusion of this battle. So what's the rundown on this week's episode of Stardust Crusaders? This was such an amazingly well-paced and awesome episode with so many twists and turns and great things going for it. First up, the action. This week's episode had it on point. It was so good. I loved watching Cockjoin and Joseph swing around the city, escaping from Dio and his weird vampire powers. I love that he has this big golden aura around him. Very Super Saiyan-esque, and it just demonstrates how godly and powerful he truly is. I also really liked how they actually showed like how like crazy his powers were, because when you see Cockjoin attack for the very first time, you don't even know how that went down. You just assume maybe he stopped time, and then later they actually show you how all those events went down. I thought that was really clever. But that scene at the end with Dio just, like, destroying everyone's night by killing this cat and doing all these horrible things to these people is very similar to the scene from last week's episode where you got that one senator to drive over people and everything. Just, again, showing that he has no regard for any human life except for his. And, of course... There's Jotaro. Jotaro is so freaking pissed at the end of this week's episode. And when he starts walking up to him, there's a scene where the world actually ends up kicking his stand right in the leg. Doesn't even borrow Jotaro whatsoever. Like, he is completely fine with fighting Dio at this point. And I can't wait to see how he's actually going to combat the abilities of the world. Because since it can stop time, I wonder if Star Platinum being a really fast and precise stand might be able to have, like, a workaround around this. All I know is this is the battle I've been waiting for. If there's a fight that I've been waiting to see in the entire JoJo series, this is it right here. This is going to be on par with Joseph fighting against Karis from the last season. This is going to be amazing. So let's make sure and check it out. On the technical side of things, this week's episode looked really, really good. On all fronts, animation, artwork, the voice acting, and the music in particular was very good. Just a very sharp episode. There was a little bit of censorship, of course, as usual, but for the most part, you saw everything, especially when Kakuin died. That whole scene was messed up, especially because even when everything is frozen and he stabs right through him, he doesn't like react or feel anything. Time is completely frozen until he deactivates the world. He can't even see him. It's just such a disturbing and nice effect. And so was this incredible episode. So I'm going to give this one a five out of five. I got no complaints with this one. I just enjoyed watching it the whole time. I was on the edge of my seat. I was excited. I was getting misty eyed. I had goosebumps all over my arms. This was one of the best episodes of the series, and you guys should definitely check it out. But let's face it, if you're JoJo fans, you've probably already checked it out. So watch it, guys. Great episode. Let's get excited for the final battle between Jotaro and Dio. So I love this episode right here. Loved it a lot. But what about you guys? Did you watch this week's episode of JoJo? Did you like the battles? What did you think of the death of Kakuin? Do you think Joseph Joestar is going to live or die? And what do you want to see from the rest of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Stardust Crusaders. Please tell me in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching my review. Make sure to like it and share it with all of your friends. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you can see all of our latest anime and manga reviews and all of my previous reviews of Stardust Crusaders. Make sure to also follow us on social media. Thank you guys again for watching. And as always, <laughs>